So I've had loads of comments from you and compliments from you on the videos that you've been watching over the past nine months. And a lot of you have been asking me to piece it all together in a step-by-step -step guide. And that's what I'm doing in this video. So this is gonna be a step-by-step -step process of how to sort out your shit at home, get your strategy right, and buy your first buy-to-let property. So normally at this point, I'd introduce myself and say, hit the subscribe button, but actually no need to do that because this is more of a reward for my current subscribers who's been watching my content. So obviously if you're not, you know what to do. But for those of you that have asked for this, let me just sort of give a bit of pre-context to this in that this is more applicable to England and Wales. A lot of it is applicable to Scotland. Just know that the, the legal process in Scotland is slightly different. So as I'm going through this England Wales, and I'll try to give the differences in Scotland of how you're gonna do this. So number one, so many people throw themselves at property investment and don't actually think too much before they do it. They just kind of go, yeah, buy to let. I've watched Homes Under the Hammer. They seem to ignore all of the bloody advice and make money. By the way, this was me at the, the beginning of my property investment journey. So if these idiots can do it and still make money, then why can't I? Well, that's great, but let's maybe not compare ourselves to the idiots to ignore all the, of the advice. Let's maybe compare ourselves to the most successful people. So number one is actually having a really good think about the strategy that you're going to look at. And this starts at home. What's the situation you're in right now? So get a grip on your current situation. Number one, your finances. What money have you got? Now, I know all of the people out there seem to go, you know what, you don't need to put your own money to build a portfolio. You've got other people's money. Yes, that is true. And that's great if you're surrounded by people or you've got those connections or the confidence. But a majority of you, if you genuinely want financial freedom from property, you need some sort of income, active pot to be playing with. Otherwise, it is going to take you years, and I mean years, to build a successful property portfolio part time. Okay, so what's your finances at? Do a credit report on yourself. I really like Experian. Um, so, you know, check it out. The first time I ever checked mine, I couldn't buy property years and years ago because of a bloody Vodafone bill. Vodafone, if you're watching, screw you. But a Vodafone bill that I missed when I was like 18, okay? And I don't even know how it got to that, but that was on my credit history. I wouldn't have known that. So many people look at it and go, I didn't even know that. And genuinely, there's a lot of mistakes made by companies as well that you're not even linked with. So check it out. Experience my favorite. I think it's free if you've never done it before. Or if you have, it's 15 quid a month. Check it out, okay? Finally, your buying power. What's your experience? Talk to a broker. Do you have a salary? What mortgages can you legitimately get? There's nothing more that pisses an estate agent off when they accept an offer from you and you need to pull out because you didn't actually have the financially financial viability to move forward. Let's move on to number two. Next is why do you want to invest in property in the first place? And this is really going to help out with the first one, cancelling out the opportunities. Now, this is really important because Actually, most successful people have focus and they keep things simple. And a way to do this is uh, taking out decision fatigue. How is decision fatigue put in? Honestly, most of all is by trainers. So I apologize on behalf of other trainers because I do education as well, but I try not to do this. You go on a free weekend and you find out about the 4,000 opportunities there are. Commercial conversions, land developments, HMO, service accommodation, deal packaging, which is my favorite, buy to let, lease options, rent to rent, assisted sales, and so much more. And suddenly you're like, oh my God, I need to do all of them. But actually, you need to have consider how much time you've got available, your experience levels, and what funds you have available so you can understand where that focus is goes. And remember, focus, where your focus goes, energy flows and results show. If you're spreading your focus too far, you're gonna get crap results because you're spreading your energy too far. Next is your property type and your criteria. So I like to be really clear on what I'm not looking to buy. So I am, you've, if you've watched my videos, which of course you have, I'm pretty boring. I like vanilla, boring buy to lets. Okay, that is me all over. And so when I'm looking at those buy to lets, I need to know what my criteria is gonna be. What return on capital employed am I looking for? What areas do I not want to go in? And what property type? So for example, I typically, 
unless I'm getting a ridiculous deal, will not buy a flat because I'm not a fan of leasehold properties. I don't mind virtual freehold, which are leasehold properties that are like 900 years long or hundreds of years and peppercorn rate rent, uh, service charge or ground rent was like three pound a year. That's fine. But in general, a flat in a block of flats, not a fan of it. A lot of problems can go. So I look at two to four bed, semi-detached and terrace properties in West Yorkshire for 99% of my portfolio at a minimum target of 8% return on capital employed. That does me bread and butter, boring properties that I can build up a legacy on for the rest of my life. But you need to decide for you. So now that you've decided what properties you're gonna go for, what strategy, what types, what area, what criteria, etc., you then start the process. Now, if you're doing this on your own, you'll probably want to start local. You need to do some viewings, you need to analyze the properties, you need to price up the refurbishments, find a refurbishment team, get it all the way through to the offer stage, uh, what am I missing here? Put your offer in writing with your proof of funds, your proof of ID and your solicitor details, and then you move on to the next stage. If you're not doing this for yourself, and obviously I've done videos to expand and all of that, if you're not doing it for yourself, then you can use a deal packager or property trader. For If you're looking for a hands-free um, deal packager, by the way, and you're interested in investing, you can put APG in the comments and I'll be able to help you out and hand you to my team. But if you're using a deal packager, then they will do all of that for you, take the stress away. So if you're time limited, I definitely recommend using somebody. It also means you're not limited to your local area. So this is especially important if you're down in London, for example, and the idea of a 150 grand property is laughable because you can't buy a bloody shed there, then you might want to liaise with somebody, for example, we're in West Yorkshire, and that's our typical purchase price, 80 to 120 grand, but it will depend on the areas you want to go. So either do it on your own or use a credible deal packager. Once you've then put in the offers, you're then going to get an offer accepted, and once this is accepted what in writing, what will then happen is your agent or you, if there's no agent and your director vendor, will issue what is known a memo or a memorandum of sale. This is issued from the agent to both the buyer, you, and the vendor's solicitors so that they can start issuing contracts. And then the legal process will begin. Now, you're gonna need to instruct your solicitor at this point, and my recommendation is number one, do not go for cheap. Remember, price is what you pay, value is what you get. So I'm never looking for a sausage factory solicitor. I'm not looking to go for the cheapest. I'm looking for a great value solicitor or lawyer to be working with. And what you wanna ask for is a fixed price for putting it through the legal process. Typically, what you'll get is your price, which is gonna be around eight, 900 pounds, plus disbursements. Just so you know, disbursements are costs to the solicitor that are separate to them. So searches, inquiries, etc. At the same time, you wanna start your financial process. Now, if you're buying in cash, it's a lot easier, but a majority of you are going to be buying with a mortgage. So the first thing you're gonna want is a DIP or an AIP or an MIP, which is a decision in principle, agreement in principle, or mortgage in principle. They're all the same thing, just people call them the set, uh, different things for whatever reason. And then you're going to start the financial process and you're going to get a call from the lender to book in a survey. Once that survey has gone out and it comes back, you're going to get a mortgage offer. And the hope is it doesn't down value during this period. At the same time as this, your solicitor would have raised inquiries and you would be going back and forth with the vendor solicitor where they'll be raising inquiries, getting answers, raising more inquiries, getting answered. And at the final stage, when all of them are answered, it will count as inquiries being satisfied. At the same time, you're going to get searches. And often these searches are really checking the local area. Is there any mining going on? Any electrical works that we should be aware of? Any history of the property that's not gonna bite you in the arse in the future? And then once you've had that mortgage offer back, the inquiries back and had a couple of cries through the legal process, you will finally have your mortgage offer. Now, when you've got this final mortgage offer and you've got the inquiries and searches back, your solicitor will then prepare a contract pack for you to review, and this will be called your completion statement, and you should be ready to exchange on the property. Now, 
if you exchange, majority of the time during investments, you exchange and complete on the same day. Just so you understand the difference, because people get confused. When you exchange on the property, you are legally obligating yourself to buy the property if it's a full exchange. Sometimes you can exchange subject to something else coming through, but more than likely you are exchanging and waiting for that final phone call to complete on the property. On the open market, you may exchange today and complete in the next couple of weeks. With investments, I'd say 99% of the time, you are exchanging and legally completing on the same day. So it's only when you complete on the property that the property is officially yours and you can get the keys in your hand. At that point, as part of that completion statement and sending your monies over to the solicitor, you will then pay stamp duty, which is legally required um, tax on property when you buy it above a certain amount. Just so you know, in the UK, that is above £40,000 and you will usually pay a surcharge of 3% on that. And it goes higher and higher in tiers, but it changes all the time. So the final part of this is once it has exchanged and completed, you'll have the contract and the keys in your hand. And usually within a couple of weeks, you will then register your title with land registry. This is when you officially own the property on paper. You own it anyway, it's just more of a formality. However, a really quick tip with this is a lot of solicitors will do a bunch of land reg um, applications every few months. You do not want that. You want them to register it within a week or two of your property completing because when you come to refinancing your property, which usually you do six months later to get the best price, it's from when the property was registered on title, not when you completed on property, which most people don't know. So now you have gone through the complete step-by-step, end-to-end process of owning your property. You've had a little cry and had a little breakdown in the meantime, but now you can be proud that you are the official owner of your first buy-to-let property investment, where you can cry one more time into your well-deserved glass of wine. So there you go. Okay, so I've not deep dived into any particular section and it is different in Scotland, mainly when you put in your offer in Scotland, you are legally tied in then, but you also get these surveys up front and the legal, a lot of the legals are done, so you shouldn't have any reason to pull out unless there's something mad that comes up. But apart from that, that's your end-to-end -end process. So if you fill in the blanks with my other videos that goes through those sections, that will be enough to go out and find your first property, get the keys in your hand and then move on to that refurbishment process if needed. Hopefully that's been valuable for you. If you're not subscribed already, you know what to do. But of course, make sure to hit that notification bell as well. So you're one of the first people to see the videos. And if you got value from this, make sure to smash the like button and let me know in the comments, did I miss anything out? I'll see you in the next video.